people who listen to this podcast have heard me say over and over again that VO2 max is the greatest predictor of lifespan. This is kind of a remarkable statement, again, and, I, and I'll repeat it because it is so profound. Whether you smoke or don't smoke, whether you have diabetes or don't have diabetes, whether you have end-stage kidney disease or don't, heart disease not, hypertension or not, all of those things play an important role in predicting the length of your life, but not as much as having a very high VO2 max. This rises above every other biomarker we have to predict the length of life. And the reason I argue that that's probably the case is that VO2 max is an exceptional integrator of work that is done. So for the few times I have patients that will tolerate the mathematical equation, I would say, loosely speaking, VO2 max equals the integral from T1 to T2 of work as a function of time dt. And we know that that work is very valuable for your health, right? We can quantify why it is that exercise helps you live longer. Why is it good for the brain? Why is it good for the heart? Why is it good for the immune system? And therefore, VO2 max becomes a very reproducible way to document that work. And it can't be changed quickly, right? So it's not a cheap biomarker like vitamin D, where you can just take a bunch of, you know, vitamin D supplements and immediately change your vitamin D level. So with all of that said, when we get into the minutia of exceptional human performance, VO2 max is not the best predictor. So let's put swimming aside because it's so obvious there, but why would it not be the best predictor of performance in something like cycling, for example, or running where the aerodynamic contribution are in the case of cycling is easier to mitigate still nowhere near as bad as swimming and where the efficiency maybe isn't as important so so where do we see vo2 max not become the most important driver of endurance performance so first of all i i could not agree more with you on that vo2 max is probably or still today, the holy grail for understanding basically longevity or, or, or let's say the best marker or metric we have in order to quantify it. Because to, to, to just elaborate a little bit further on that, you can also say that, well, VU2 max is a measure of something. So we are measuring something in the end there. Uh, but we could, and, and to be a little bit crude, uh, you could say that okay, fine. You some people could say, well, having a good, having a good heart, having a good heart is, is a good predictor of 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 uh, longevity, for example. But I'm pretty sure we can find people that are in the bed and they are really sick that still have a really good heart. So obviously that, that then you understand that well there have to be more nuances to this than just the heart itself. You can have people that has a great heart and everything looks good, lungs perfect, everything like this, but they have neurological diseases, for example. All of these will limit you from reaching a high view to max, which is again so integral. It basically just encompasses all these kind of things because you can't reach a high view to max if any of these functions here are not not good. So I I, I, could, I couldn't agree more with you. View to max is the absolute best predictor uh, of mostly everything, uh, just because that it encompass, encompasses all these kind of things. Then on to why doesn't VU2 max become a very good predictor of performance in, in cycling? I would argue it does, but then we are also starting to reach some more limitations as well. You want to have as a high VU2 max as possible, even as a cyclist. The only problem is that we are now facing some other problems as well when you are when you are an elite athlete. And that is something we call maximum sustainable energy expenditure. So obviously, to turn around more calories per time, that's that obviously means also that over time you will use more calories as well. And this, in order now to support growth, you obviously have to input more calories also because you're burning more, you need to, to bring more in. Otherwise, you are starting to run into deficit and you, worst case, end up with problems. So feeding that, let's say, calorie consumption becomes crucial. 
Further, the problem is that VU2 max is closely related. So if we wanted to have a surrogate metric for, for VU2 max, we could typically do make an athlete run all out for, let's say, a couple of minutes, one to five minutes, let's say three minutes mm -hmm. to make it simple. Or we can have a cyclist do a three minute or four, five minute, but something something short, not too short, but absolutely not too long. But like typically- Yeah, typically, like four minutes is a pretty good spot. Exactly, yeah. yes, yeah. exactly. This is again, a very good proxy to understand or as, a, or as a surrogate to understand, of course, what is your view to max as well. But then what we have to understand as well, that this is not necessarily what you need in, in Tour de France. You don't need to be the best four minute, uh, four minute athlete. This is more important for our track cyclist a track cyclist that has the working time for four hours for four minutes then view to max becomes maybe the best predictor of performance again so it's a little bit depending on context yeah. but because we already said now there's another limitation here as well and that is the maximum sustainable energy expenditure how much energy can you expend on different let's say intensities in order to increase let's say this the the, the speciality of what you're going to be good at so if you are going to be best in the world at riding 160 kilometers and then sprinting towards the finish line over a couple of hundred meters. You can even not argue that it's a sprint even, but let's say you're really going fast the last, last kilometers. The problem with this is that if you spend most of this and en that energy that you have available now to increase your, your view to max, you're spending obviously less time on specializing on what you're really going to be good at. And you won't find a track cyclist that you can put into Tour de France and think that he will win Tour de France. And you won't find a Tour de France rider that you can put on a track and become the one kilometer or, four, or, or one kilometer uh, winner there. Obviously, because they are specializing on two different two different durations. So simply because we have a limitation for how much energy that we can turn around per day, per week, and so on, sustainably, because that's the key here, sustainably. It basically means also that we have to focus more on that exactly specificity that we're looking to excel in. And then, yes, view to max will still be the best predictor, but not necessarily having the highest number. That is maybe the 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 the, the, the diff or let's say the 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 nuance uh, the nuance to it. Yeah, and and let's let's stay with cycling um, and even keep it simple and just talk about not include the track. Right, which is you know far more far closer to an anaerobic effort. Uh, it, it's sort of on the anaerobic side of a peak aerobic effort. But even if you think about, let's go back to the the um, the the distance of the 112 mile time trial that a triathlete is doing in an Ironman. Right, so. For the most part, I mean, it's there's no sprinting in there. He's not sprinting at the very end. In fact, he's probably trying to keep that relatively constant in effort to prepare himself or herself to do the, the marathon run that's following. Um, even in that system, let's go back and talk about two athletes. If there are two athletes that have the same VO2 max, does power at VO2 max give you another layer of insight. So if let's just say Christian and Gustav each have a VO2 max of 80 milliliters per minute per kilogram, but one of them is doing that at 450 watts and one of them is doing it at 425 watts. Does that give you a new piece of information or is it still limited because that's really only speaking to a four minute, five minute effort? Mm, yes and no. Um, that is, of course, where you can black box, of course, a little bit. Now, we, we, we just talk purely about the view to maximum focus on that. But of course, there will be a fairly good, uh, fairly good correlation also between the oxygen consumption, let's say at VU2 max, because you you could argue that there's really no power at VU2 max because it like as long as you are above uh, what we call VO2 steady state. So you, you have a couple of different steady state scenarios. You have typically one that a lot of people knows about, which is the maximum like the steady state. But then of course, above there again, you have something called VO2 steady state. And at the moment you start to exceed over VO2 steady state, then basically it's just a matter of duration before you will basically elicit VO2 max. But obviously the lower, the closer you stay to your VO2 steady state, the lower the power you will basically outputting. If you put out a too high power, obviously you won't be able to reach VO2 max because you will basically start, um, you, will, you will start uh, uh, 
um, you will not be able to contract your muscles effi efficiently anymore and you won't be able to bring your ventilation or oxygen consumption up to a max. But there's a sweet spot there, more or less, where basically any power that sits between, let's say, uh, VO2 steady state and, and, and a higher, uh, um, let's say, a higher power number will elicit VO2 max. It's just the amount of duration that is needed in order to get there. So, of course, this adds, let's say, a... Uh, um, um, us uncertainty because you need to know this. You need to know this. I think it's important just to sort mm. of the listener understands that you can't necessarily just go out and then you people start talking about power at view to max and their view to max because then suddenly people will get confused because you don't you have to know also then what what was the duration of yeah, it as how, well. How did and, you get there? And yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah.